Uh, at the we're at the precinct right now. We just got in a fight. <laughs> oh yeah, that's no surprise. <laughs> yeah, that's no surprise. Uh, according to somebody in the comment section, you guys had enough donuts for two people. Oh for Jesus. more than two people. So I knew he was gonna bring that up. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm I said just to, just, just, I'm just calling him to, to thank Ryan for keeping my feet warm for me. Hey, it's much warmer with me in it than it is when you sit in it. So it may still be warm next week. Uh, I was just calling check in, man. That's all. Hope did, you guys are having fun to make sure nobody was in jail. Did you want to do the promo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he hasn't done the promo yet, Paul. I I did it. Uh, I did it earlier before I picked you up. Oh, did you? Because yeah. you don't want me to laugh at you? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly why I did That's it. Well, you, trust me, you don't want to listen to Mario do a promo. It sounds like Floyd May- Mayweather reading nighttime <laughs> stories to your kids. Hit that subscribe bell and join Hashtag Nation. After you hit that subscribe button, be sure to head over to sportscaster.com and also follow Hashtag Sports on sportscaster.com. Premier episode will be Saturday, July 20th at 8 a.m. Yeah, a lot of those guys will only be like 30 by the time they're here. Or in the 30s, 30-ish. Yeah, Hyde will probably be the oldest, right? Yeah, but he's extended longer than Poyer. Well, actually, Hyde and Poyer are the same age, 28. They're both 28? Yeah, they're both 28. Uh, Hyde is signed until 2021. Poyer is signed until 2020. So Poyer's got two more years left. Hyde's got three. Uh, The interesting part about those guys that are you're you're looking to sign is the years that they come up on that contract year. Um, Obviously, uh, Tre'Davious White, you have the fifth year option, so you don't really technically have to worry about re-signing him. But that fifth year option does take a big chunk of money. Uh, you'd be better off trying to re- renegotiate. And he'll be the first fifth-year option that they pick up in what the last three, mm-hmm. right? So because they didn't have one in, they didn't have one the year. Uh, well, they they didn't pick up Sammy. They didn't have one the year after Sammy. They didn't have a fifth-year option because they gave up their first-round pick that year to go up and get Sammy, and then yes. they didn't pick up Lawson's. So yeah, so Hyde will be the first one that they pick up. Assuming they don't sign him long term before then, I think they'll at least pick up the option and then probably work with him. You say white, you mean? White, sorry, what did I say, Hyde? I think you said Hyde. Yeah, no, white. That's all right. That's that, whole, that whole secondary we yeah. need back. Given that, given what's been going on with, with the team, if these draft picks happen to pan out, mm-hmm. now is this going to be a situation like the Seattle Seahawks, a la, they're going to just try to roll so much money over every year to try to sign these guys to maybe four or five year deals? Or is this what, where you're just kind of trying to, you know what, we got these guys under contract, we may trade them. Or is this a situation where you know, we're going to have to make some difficult decisions upcoming with Allen? Because I've heard I heard a story is that the blueprint the blueprint is you get a rookie quarterback, you buy all these little toys around him, mm-hmm. and then when he's finally maturing to the point where he can win games for you, mm-hmm. you let some of them toys go because mm-hmm. you got to pay him. Yeah. So on that list, who are some guys that you think you cannot lo- like they have to remain in Buffalo for their career? I mean, it's really tough not to say Tredavious White, but at the same time, I mean, you let Stephon Gilmore walk and you replace him with Tredavious White, right? I mean, and a guy like McDermott with how good he is with corners and the defensive guy that he is, I mean, I I don't know that you have to keep Tredavious White. I mean, fans aren't going to like to hear that because Mm. he's a fan favorite and they love love having him and the kid's a legitimate corner. But, I mean, legitimate corners come out in every draft. Well, if you really need to. But the, the big thing about keeping white is you don't have to go get a lockdown corner, right? I mean, that's the luxury that he gives you. Yes. It's the same luxury Shut that you have field. when it comes to a quarterback, right? Is the fact that the, the reason you need to find a franchise quarterback is twofold. One, you can win with a franchise quarterback. And two, you don't have to find a franchise quarterback if you've already got one. <laughs> so the, the pressure there is off. You can use your first round picks to go get toys for him or to go get shutdown corners. So white, being re-signed white, gives you that luxury where you don't have to go find another Tredavious White. You don't have to go find another Stephon Gilmore, right? Because you already got one. You just need to find somebody on the other side, yeah. which is easier to do than to find the other guy. So, I mean, Jordan Poyer, I guess, out of all those guys, is probably the most expendable to me. Really? Yeah. I mean, because what do you, what do you have to go find? You have to go find a, a center fielder? 
I well, mean, no, no, that Hyde's more the center fielder. I think Poyer's more the guy that you want in to the, put box, in the box. More in the box, yeah. He had, he had over 100 tackles last year. Poyer. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't because the. I mean, I mean, I mean, people complain about the defensive front, and I understand that. You know, if guys are getting to the second level, third level, you know, Edmonds and Milano and and uh, Poyer are going to have more of the tackles. Hyde's more the center fielder. I feel like I feel he like can Hyde play though. in the box. No, I'm saying he yeah, can play in the box. I feel like Hyde though is just. He doesn't get enough better. credit for being oh, how yeah. good and how integral to that defense that he is. I mean, H- Micah Hyde is the reason. Him and and Kyle Williams are the reasons that Trey that Trey Edmonds and and Trey White and those guys were so good because mm. they had those guys to kind of learn from. I mean, Micah Hyde is so smart when it comes to football. I mean, and he oh, knows yeah. what everybody on the defense is supposed to be doing. I think losing him is is that's going to be a, a blow to that well, team if they can't find somebody to replace him. It could be one of the things that's why they signed him longer than Poyer. Yeah. Because they knew the shelf well, life and Poyer were putting him in the box so much. Yeah, I mean, and Poyer was a relatively unproven entity too, right? I mean, he played in yeah. Cleveland and he wasn't that great in Cleveland. He played corner, then he moved to safety and he was, you know, so... Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, Hyde was an, uh, a known commodity, and you'd rather pay the known than pay the unknown. And, and Hyde's a guy where you knew he was going to be successful. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I think that's that's they showed that commitment to Hyde. That's why he signed longer term. I mean, he's going to be what? He's he's uh, 28 now, so he's going to be what 31, 32 years old by the time the contract comes up, and they have to resign him in 2022. So. You know, a 31, 32 year old safety. Not hateful. Yeah, no. I mean, maybe you can get him at a, a relatively disc, a relative discount if you start to win some football games. Yeah, I, I mean, the difference we talk about, we talk about Hyde and Boyer is you can come from two schools of thought. You can either think, okay, Hyde's more of the cover guy. He doesn't get the credit for how cerebral he is. Boyer's more of the guy you, you want to put down on nickel packages that are just going to stick his head in there if it's a run. But you think of them, and not too many games have they played separately. Maybe yeah, they're yeah, just so true. good together that you want to keep that. They're only making ten million dollars combined yeah. this year. I mean, it's it's ridiculous the amount of money that they're that they're making. Um, on the low end, you talk about safety tandems in the NFL, and they have to be up there top five. Not just, and it's not oh, yeah, tandems, biased. absolutely, yeah. That's not being biased. Um, but I mean, if you can look at the market too, right? I mean, oh if God. if if Jordan Poyer, if if you put all of the safeties, all the strong safeties in the league in a free agent pool right now. Mm-hmm. Where would Jordan Poyer rank? He's not, I mean, he's not a top five safety, I don't think, at the position. Because of age and versatility? I, I don't I The guy, like I said before, I, I mean, I give you his stats, but he does so many different things for he your does, team. He does, yeah. Uh, I yeah. just think in terms of market value, like, what, what are you going to re-sign him for, right? I mean, he's oh, not going to yeah. demand huge money when when his when his contract comes up. A, because the position doesn't demand the, the big money. And B, he's not a he's not a household name, right? Six I mean, and a half? Yeah. Maybe seven a year? Yeah. If so if you can it. get so if you can get him for six and a half, you get a hide for eight and a half. Yeah. Right? I mean now you're paying your safety tandem, you know, seventeen. Would you sign him for three or four more years, both of them? Three. Three. Three yeah. with you know maybe a maybe some type of a vesting option or something like that, depending on games. But the concern I have with Jordan Poyer is is what we saw. The way he plays reminds me so much of Aaron Williams, and we saw with Aaron Williams how quickly you can go from a mm. hundred miles an hour to out of the league. Right. Yeah. I mean, all it takes is you know uh, a cheap shot from you know a, a wide receiver on a crackback, and, the and then a <laughs> an ill-advised, pointless dive at a Julian Edelman touchdown when you're already I down mean, two you, touchdowns. Would you like attribute that to being like a freak accident, or is that just something you said that's part of this game? Because which one? The which which injury? The the one that he dove at Edelman. I think it was stupid. I think it was the, the way he plays. He played reckless, and, and that was oh, yeah, I I know. That's I what think, got him in trouble. I think the way Poyer plays makes it seem like he's reckless. I don't think Poyer's as reckless as Williams. Oh, is. no. No, not, not by any means. I mean, I think it's Williams went out there. Yeah, Williams went out there, and he was a reckless player in a lot of cases when he played. I mean, mm-hmm. just I mean, and I point back to that Edelman play all the time. You're down two, down two touchdowns already. He's going in. There's no need to dive. And you now you just exacerbate your neck injury and you never step foot on the field again, right? Okay. I mean, that's a reckless type of football play. Jordan Poyer is not reckless. But, again, the physicality he plays with and the fact that he's not as big as the guys that he's stepping into the box to, A, shed blocks from, B, take lowered helmets from because apparently the running backs can lower their helmets but the defensive players can't anymore in the okay. NFL. It, it opens itself up to injury because, you know, all it takes is Derrick Henry – 
you know, running over him and stepping, you know, and, and you know, yeah. putting his foot on his chest, and he's never the same player again because yes. you can't play the safety position in the NFL if you have neck injuries, if you have, you know, shoulder injuries, things like that. I mean, it, it happens Earl all too frequently. I mean, Earl <laughs> Thomas, he's never been the same player. No. At, at, you know, since he came back from his neck injury. Considering what's going on, um, Allen, you figure if he plays well enough, He's gonna he's gonna get resigned. He's gonna have a huge contract. Yeah, and we'll put, we'll kind of put that on, on on a little side note because that's one of those things that it's gonna it's gonna pop up in determining these contracts of the other guy or these other guys. Oh sure. But yeah. very interestingly enough, a lot of these guys are defensive players, and the Bills are projected. Yep. By many in the seven one six that <laughs> they are gonna have a top five defense. So if you look at the names that we mentioned, you got Hyde, Poyer, mm-hmm. White, Edmonds, Milano. Mm-hmm. You have those five guys. As cornerstones of your defense, Oliver's only a year behind. I know mm-hmm. Oliver's. That's the scariest part. Yeah, uh, you're talking about Poyer. Now, to go back to your point on Tre'Davious White, you know he was the fourth cornerback taken off the board, mm-hmm. which sounds insane. Yeah, to think about that. The other thing that I thought was very interesting was that um, Josh Norman. Mm-hmm. You know, McDermott had a great defense down there. They went to the Super Bowl. He had Josh Norman. Then Josh Norman takes off. They draft Bradbury, who now is, is a pretty good player. But yeah. Before, he wasn't very – he was just get in, getting into his own. That secondary was in trouble. Mm-hmm. So, he didn't have his lockdown corner. Yeah. Therefore, his defense was, was ended up suffering. Does that increase the value of White, or do you think it diminishes the value of White because they can go get another one that they think that they can, they can scout them well? Yeah, I mean, I think – I think it, I think White's value – White's value to this team is what McDermott values him at, right? I mean, if McDermott feels like Tredavious White is a product of our system and we went out and got him because he had the tools that we needed him to have, which we talked about before, Mm -hmm. if he has the tools that we needed him to have, we plugged him into our system and that's why he's as good as he is, then you have the confidence that you can go find another guy with those tools and plug him in. If that's the case, then Trey White doesn't carry the value the fans think he carries. And I think McDermott is, he'll never let on if that's the case, and he'll never tell anybody that that's the case. Him and Leslie Frazier, I think, know who the indispensable members of the defense are. I'd like to think that Trey White is one of those indispensable members because, again, it gives you the flexibility to not have to feel like you need to go get another lockdown corner. And if you're trying to draft a lockdown corner when you don't have one on the roster, that's a tall, tall task, and that's a that's rolling a lot of dice in, in today's NFL because you have to have someone – who can take away the best receiver on the field because of how frequently teams throw the football. Come playoff time. You're right, especially. I mean, you look at the AFC, too. I mean, you've got to figure out ways to neutralize Baker Mayfield, even in your division, Sam Darnold, mm-hmm. Tom Brady. I mean, if you can't neutralize those guys by taking away, at least taking away one of their favorite weapons, at the very least, mm-hmm. then it's going to be difficult to win football games. So to try to say, okay, White, we're going to let you walk, and now we're going to try and draft a corner? That's that's going to be a, a, a tall task. So I, I think the most telling part about Trey White will be if they pick up his fifth-year option, because I think that's a no-brainer, and they draft a corner high, that might be kind of a, a signal of, of Trey White not remaining in Buffalo. Because he's going to demand a lot of money. He will. And he's going to get paid a lot of money. So yes. if McDermott doesn't feel like that's the position where you spend a lot of money, then they're just not going to do it. I mean, and they've kind of shown that hand a little bit by letting Gilmore walk, um, but you can make the argument Gilmore doesn't fit that defense to begin with anyway. But, um, you know, it, it, that it's going to be telling coming into this year what they do in the draft is is going to be probably what signals maybe the end or the, the signing of, of Trey White long term. If they extend, here's the thing I've been thinking about. If they extend Hyde or Poyer, would that be the first telling sign that White may not be here? Because, listen, hey, we've given you this blanket mm-hmm. over the top of this defense your whole career. Yeah. We've had Hyde and Poyer. They've been they've been a reason why you've been so successful. Yeah. Okay? All right. It's, it's like the chicken of the egg argument. All right. He's such a lockdown corner that you can have Hyde and Poyer play everywhere else. But if Hyde and Poyer are such a good tandem, that's what makes Trey, uh, Trey White's job a little bit easier. Well, we weren't. We weren't, you know, as good of a team last year, so they end up signing Star Latoule to a fifty million dollar deal for five years, and then they draft Ed Oliver and they extend Jerry Hughes. All right, they're, they're making your life easier as well. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's it, you see all these guys in the, in the combination of the defensive players that are on there. Why is 
was was Oliver there to generate a, pre, a pass rush to help Tre'Davious White? Or no, uh, Tremaine Edmonds not blitz as much. Is Tre'Davious White going to be singled up, and then they're going to play ten on ten ball? Mm. You know what what type of combination? I think that's why people have such a high expectation for this defense. It's like, well, what are they going to do? How's Milano going to come back after his injury? Right. You know, that's that's going to be a telling sign. How is that going to format into them? What deals are they going to get? Will the Bills have enough money to get these guys and mm-hmm. then sign whoever they need to as well as, as role players? Because the one thing Bean and McDermott have been really good about, they've been signing guys at one- and two-year deals that are just like, I'm just going to yeah. put these guys here for now. Yeah. You know, I'm going to plug the hole here <laughs> yeah. until I get a chance to fix it. So uh, I don't know if they're going to have all of them. That's the thing that's there's really and it's going to bug, bug a lot of Bills fans is that I don't think they're going to have all those guys. I mean, it's so it's so tough to it, what do you it's, sacrifice? It's, it's not that tough to climb the mountain. It's in the NFL, it's really tough to stay on the top of the mountain. Yes. So right, I mean, it's re, I mean, it's really you don't see. And it's a reason. There's a reason that the Patriots are lauded as a, 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 a dynasty in today's NFL because it's so hard to do what they do. Is to just be so good year in and year out, and it doesn't matter who comes in and who leaves, and you're still as good as you've always been. That's tough to do, and I think looking at this defense, if it if it lives up to expectations, and these guys continue to grow, because keep in mind, I mean, all these guys that we're talking about, you've got them for at least another year after this. So you want to try to extend them soon, but you want to find that middle ground because you don't want to extend them too soon, right? You don't want to start. You don't want to extend Milano this off season mm-hmm. because he was injured last year. Now he goes and plays lights out this year. Which guy is he, right? You still have to question which guy he is. Mm-hmm. So you don't necessarily want to sign him. It's way too early to sign Tremaine Edmonds long term. No, you can't. You can't even start negotiating. You, you can't. So Trey White is the first one that comes up, and I think that might be the first signal of what do they think of this defense. Because if they sign Trey White, then I think that they're kind of they're going to try to keep everybody together. If they sign Trey White long term, mm-hmm. um, they're going to try to keep that core together as long as they can. Which I think that's the smart thing to do. Um, but it's got to be prudent because one thing that McDermott has not done is hand out bad contracts. So no, no, and and, and to your point, if they sign White long term. And that's that happens to be the Pete, and like you said, maybe they have the same concerns as you do about Poyer. Listen, we're going to need a lockdown guy because we're going to have to bring a rookie safety in here to work with Hyde, yeah, and you know develop. So we need someone who needs to lock down half the field, yeah, while that guy's learning. And you know they weren't shy, they weren't shy about drafting the safety and going to get free agent safeties to yeah. try to come in and, and develop. Um, I mean, they, you can you can bring in when it comes too. to the safety position, you can bring in a Jordan Poyer, maybe not at his level, but you can bring in a banger year in and year out. I mean, they're all over the NFL, oh, and they're all over the, you know, you find those tweener type guys in in the draft <laughs> that, you know, they're not quite a linebacker, but they're not quite a secondary guy either. Miles right? Jack? Yeah, I mean, no. yeah, yeah, <laughs> Miles Jack. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you find those guys all over the place, right? And you tend to get decent value on them because they don't do anything great, but they do a lot of stuff pretty good. Mm-hmm. But the big thing is that they can step into the box and tackle. And that's, exactly, you can play them any. And, and if you've got if you've got a Micah Hyde over the top, yes. you're okay with that guy taking some chances and and making some mistakes because you know you got a guy that can erase him in the back end. I mean, that's what allowed right. I mean, Earl Thomas is what allowed Cam Chancellor to be, you know be what he was or I'm sorry Cam Chancellor allowed Earl Thomas to be what he was because he had that eraser mentality in the backfield I mean that's why Ed Reed you know you never knew who the other safety was because they just cycled through him because Ed Reed was always over the top and well you had Ed Reed and you had Ray in front of him so it didn't matter what he did right so you've got Micah Hyde and you've got Edmonds in front of him yeah right so I mean I think you're 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 gonna allow your other positions to make but I think that middle of that defense that defensive tackle, middle linebacker, safety, free safety are kind of the most important three positions on that defense. And then McDermott's going to have to figure out what he's going to do with the corner position if Trey White, as as much as he supposedly loves Buffalo, and it looks like he loves Buffalo, um, money talks and warm weather is, is a difficult thing to pass up. So, yeah. well, you know, I mean, and there's I a lot of taxes know. in New York. Don't forget about that. True. I mean, I don't New know. York does not do itself any, it doesn't do its, its sports well, teams any favors because of its taxes. Well, like the Mario Williams deal, they could write it into the contract where yep. you, the, the taxes are paid like that. But I don't know, I, I don't know how well the warm weather is going to help uh, the goalie academy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, jeez. <laughs> I think I got hockey in Florida, right? I mean, yeah. They got two teams. They got more teams than Buffalo does. 